Hey everyone, it's three questions with Andrew Murata. There you go, brother. Andrew. What's up, George? All right. So Andrew and I have just been blabbing on for the last hour without any recording, but it's been great because Andrew actually, not only was he a, a, a teacher, a principal, works in central office right now, uh, he also ref basketball. So basically, he's just like, kind of, we're the same person. Well, and George, it didn't come up. I, I went to Greece for 10 days, too. I had to prepare for my time with you. I had to go to Greece. I saw my family. My family. Some people. There, man. Where'd you go in Greece? We did two days in Athens, uh, three days in Santorini. We did Naxos. Uh, it was fantastic. It was incredible. Hey, man. So I don't know if you went. I, I don't know if you went. This is like now we're doing like Greek talk all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you went, but we the last time I was there. So I, like I went and was a kid several times and you go to Athens, you go to the Acropolis, right? You gotta go to the, did you go to the Acropolis? The Acropolis, man, like Zeus, like, did you go to the Acropolis or no? Acropolis, Temple of Nike, the whole thing. Sure. So, so when I was a kid, I remember going up there and it was like, I think they like kind of like cleaned it up and, and I met like, you know, it was like pretty Rooney if that, I don't know if that's the best term for it. Yeah. Remember the last time I was there, standing on the top of that mountain on the Acropolis, and then looking to Athens and seeing a basketball court. And I, I distinctly remember seeing the basketball court, and that was like totally like, like I just visioned that's where Yanis used to play. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> you know what I mean, Shoot. yeah, like it, it was just a weird thing because it was kind of like this ancient his history. And Greece, you know, was never, never really was a basketball country until probably 2000. They actually, I think they won. Um, they actually, I remember they beat the U S in, I think it was the world championships. And they had, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was called baby shack. And it was like the, one of the biggest deals ever that Greece won against the U S in a champ. Wow. Yeah. And then wow. basketball court. Right. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer success breeds success. Right. So a bunch of people didn't expect Greece to win that in Greece. And then all of a sudden they win it. And then there's basketball courts popping up by the Acropolis like years later, which is, which is a really cool thing for me as a kid, you know, being a Greek kid and, uh, you know, growing up in a small town in Canada and loving basketball. And it was never, it was like, it was a really a soccer country at the time. And I was just kind of, I just remember that. So Ah, oh, the memories, man. Going to Greece. Good, good. Beautiful country, man. It was beautiful. I love it. Okay. So, Andrew, it's, I could talk about sports. <laughs> I'm going to talk about education. Okay. So, <laughs> Andrew, we're going to ask you three questions, but um, you've written several books. And the one specifically, I would love to hear more about. So, we're going to talk more about in the second podcast. But if you can just kind of give us a quick synopsis of the book, The Principle Surviving and Thriving, you actually see it in the description down below. Tell us what that book is about. And, you know, I got, you got a one minute trailer for this and we'll talk more about the, the second one. Yeah, George. And again, it's an honor to be on with you. I wrote that book back in 16 and you and I talked about officiating, right? You're getting yelled at as an official. Uh, you're enforcing the rules on as an official. You're in the spotlight as an official. People are passionate about their teams that you're involved with. It's very similar in schools and people, principals, new leaders aren't used to that pressure. All these people coming at you, basketball, you got to, you got to respond quickly. Things coming at you. It's like being a leader in school. So that book has a lot of practical tips uh, on not just how to survive, but how to take care of yourself, how to focus on your family right. and do an amazing job for your school community, for sure. Yeah, there, there's like a, the the best principal I ever had was her name was Kelly Wilkins. And, and I talk about her all the time. And one of the things that she really embedded into me, and I thought this was really amazing, was as a teacher, she really made me feel an ownership over the entirety of the school. Yeah, What I did in my classroom mattered to everyone and mattered to the entirety of the school. It wasn't just, you know, isolated to the students I worked with that year. And when I became a principal, you, you, you do feel that like you do feel you're responsible for everything that goes on in that school as a principal. And it was just a magic to realize how in the role, it's like how she got teachers to feel that and to really, and not, not to like, I don't want to say to feel that. Cause I feel that almost sounds like a little bit of a manipulation, but really feel it and actually it'd be true. Yeah. 
that would, that really mattered to me. And it, it, it was part of my hope as, as uh, a school leader that I did the same thing that Kelly did for me, that people saw that they were part of something way bigger. And it wasn't just about the direction that I had or anything like that is the direction we created together and that everything we did in our classrooms impacted the other classrooms. And not only that, like our the other schools in our district, that if we did really amazing things, people would look at us and they would want to learn from us to benefit kids in their school. So I just, I, I think that's a really powerful. So again, the principle surviving and thriving, check that out uh, in the description down below. Now I know you and I have had great teachers, um, whether it's on the basketball court or, you know, in school, when you think of a really great teacher, who is someone you think of and why? Yeah, two parts, George. You know, I got my I got my black notebook here, right? And as a as a fifth grader, my math teacher, Mrs. Kiernan, right? We had the notebook, we had to fold the pages, uh, I had to date the top, put my name on it, what was the topic I was doing. And I'm still doing that today, 48 wow. years old. I'm still doing that from Mrs. Kiernan. But right now, right in front of me, I just went to a funeral Saturday. My my children's fourth grade teacher just passed away. She had cancer. My wife worked with her in our, our, our kids' district in Pennsylvania. I'm in Port Jervis, New York, George. Got to give a shout out to the Raiders. Um, but when I'm telling you, there you go. <laughs> I, I'm telling you that church was packed, George, right. packed about this teacher's impact because they knew she cared. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to Mrs. Fagan and her family uh, to see the impact. Yeah, we've been to retirement parties. We've been to speeches where a teacher, yeah. But to go to a teacher's funeral who died too young uh, and see the tears in her kids' eyes for, you know, generations here uh, was, was very impactful. All right, we're going to give some applause to that one. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're saying that, I actually had a colleague of mine and he was someone I truly respected and loved and, he was, he was an interesting guy. Cause he, you know, he was, uh, he was, uh, he, he taught, um, like construction, you know, like, like career and technology studies. And he was just, he was just a master teacher, even though I didn't understand the stuff that he taught and he, he passed away really young and it was the same thing. I've never seen so many people at a funeral, except for every other teacher that had passed away too young. And it's really like, it's just kind of amazing how packed those places are. And it just shows you. And again, this is like kind of the whole premise of because of the teacher too often, I hate that people, a lot of teachers that passed away too young, never saw that never realized that because so many people didn't say anything to them. So good reminder for everybody, the teachers in your past that made an impact, tell them before it's too early. Reach out to them. Absolutely. So, uh, you obviously wrote a book called the principal surviving and thriving. I know, um, you've had a really great career as an administrator at very different levels, but I'm, I guarantee you've had worked with great principals as well. So whether it's a principal superintendent, assistant principal, who's a great administrator you think of and, and, and why? Yeah. So many leaders around us, George blessed to be around, uh, the great John Exantis called it our kitchen cabinet, right? Who are the, who are the people that we learn from and, uh, I, I want to give a shout out right now to my, my current superintendent is uh, Dr. John Bell here in uh, Port Jervis schools. Uh, like me as a basketball official, he was a, 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 a baseball umpire and actually umpired in the little league world series, uh. making hard decisions. Uh, but you talk about someone who's invested in our community. He started our hall of fame. He's in the hall of fame. Uh, and he has now returned to the district. He was uh, an assistant superintendent here and is now back as superintendent 10 years later. Um, and it's like having a rock star in town. It's like the Beatles are in town. He gets standing ovations wherever he goes. People know he cares about this community. And, uh, you know, I, I admire that. I admire that he, he had, you used the word ownership, right? He's an owner in this community in many ways. So I would give him a shout out there. I got to ask you this. This is going to sound weird. Who was the first guy you mentioned? A John Exanthus, another Greek. You heard that IS in there. So, so what does he do? So John was our former superintendent here, uh, the big Greek, as we called them. Um, he moved on to Valley Central, but he was an assistant soup here and then our superintendent for many years, uh, John Exanthus. So, okay, so this is there, there's a reason. And you you said you said his name, and of course, Greek right away. And I actually so the weirdest thing, somebody was just on the podcast who said the same guy. Like wow. in the last few weeks, and I don't wow. even 
published yet because what was the thing that you said the there's uh, a the, the kitchen cabinet his 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 that, mindset was the kitchen cabinet you said the exact same thing well we got to find out who that person was oh, that's like throwing me off because i'm like oh this is a greek guy that you're talking about and and i was like and they're like i don't know if it's greek i'm like that's a greek name there's no john is Yanis. x was incredible he was an incredible leader just still in touch with him he was a great mentor and a friend i need i need greek music on my soundboards <laughs> For this after all right okay uh, and and shout out to your current superintendent as well too so let's give let's give them all both right and uh and really visionary obviously because we talked about some of the roles that you have it's very different from what a lot of people get to experience you know as uh um you know someone in your role so last question uh you constantly are putting out content sharing with people you have the opportunity to speak to groups which is absolutely wonderful and that takes a lot of learning, right? Like if you're in that space where you're writing, you have to constantly evolve, change, and and really kind of and it pushes your thinking. So when you can go back to your first year of teaching, what what advice would you give to young Andrew Murata at the beginning of the year that you know from all the things that you've learned during your time as an educator? Yeah, and I got thrown into it, George. I never student taught. Uh, I was there observing classes in Staten Island, New York. And I got called to the principal's office in the middle of the day. Uh, the teacher had quit. And uh, he's like, you want the job? I'm like, I, I don't know how to teach. He's like, sure you do. You've been in there. I'm like, I, I, I'm not even certified. You'll be certified tomorrow. They fingerprinted me and they threw me in the room. And uh, really? you know, so that, yeah, that's yeah, a true story, man. And I got my butt kicked for, for eight months. Wow. But that's where that surviving and thriving comes from right i i got i literally got my butt kicked for the uh, whole year but i had tremendous mentors um that like we talked off air about you know you have a short turnaround tomorrow's coming you screwed this lesson up today you you, you know you're gonna do better no you're not waiting until next month you're not waiting till christmas break tomorrow those kids are in front of you so do a better job so you know for new teachers back there this too this too shall pass and get amazing people around you because they will help you, right? You don't need to hire an, an outside consultant to come in. The, the best teacher down the hall, go observe them, go learn from that person. And they're going to want you to use the things that they're using that's working in their room. Make those connections early for those new teachers. I love that. And you, you alluded to something we were talking about before the podcast. I'm sure this before, and it was just both of us grew up, or I wouldn't say we grew up, we actually ref um, high level basketball. Now you're way high, you know, higher level than I ever got to, but something I aspired to. And then, you know, I started doing more and more speaking and writing and, uh, and you kind of went in the same direction as well. The, the thing that we benefited from in that was you would actually ref a game in the first half and there'd be people watching you in the stands and then they would go in at halftime and they would rip you to shreds for 10 minutes. And then you'd have to go out and there was no positive sandwiches. There was no like massaging your ego and it wasn't because they were mean people. They didn't have the time. It was just like, you got to get back out there. And the, the people that did the best in officiating were the ones who actually went out and tried the things they suggested right away. Cause they knew you're open to feedback and it, and it was never, and sometimes they would, you could come back and say like, Hey, I tried this. I don't see it working. Maybe it's just not my style, but they appreciated that you were willing to give it an effort to actually implement feedback. And as someone who hired people, the, the, the most important thing for me was, were you willing to learn? And that was something I would try to figure out in the interview. Like, would you take feedback in the interview? Because if you think I know it all, and I always say this, that if someone walks in and they are an amazing teacher, but they're not willing to grow anymore, I would take someone who's not as good, who I can tell will grow because they'll eventually surpass them. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that was really powerful. So that, that willingness to learn, I know is really, really beneficial i i know you gotta go right away so now i feel guilty but um because i know i just i could talk to you all day i know we got so many stories and now like you got you're just dropping greek stuff and basketball <laughs> stuff and knowing that we'd like basically do the same jobs but yeah andrew I, I i encourage you andrew's a wonderful guy check out his book um the principle surviving and thriving you can actually find that on amazon but you can also find uh everything on his website as well and i'll put that link down below so andrew thanks so much for being on i hope everyone uh you, you connect with andrew and uh yeah it was great talking to you i look forward to, to more coming up george keep rolling my friend